Hey everybody, Mr. Chantry here, your Neighborhood Planetarium Director with the April 2020 edition of Evening Sky Excursions, where I show you what you can see in the sky tonight over your head in our community. So they might say that March comes in line, like a lion and out like a lamb, but here in April, the lion's going to take center stage in the sky, and we'll take a look at that in our evening sky. Now, April is a great month in that the days are getting longer and longer. For astronomy, it's not the greatest because the nights are getting shorter and shorter, but it's still a great opportunity to get outside and take a look in between the clouds and see what you can see in the sky. Now, I have our sky set up here for April 1st, the first day of the month, and you can see here uh, we're set up for just at about 6 o'clock in the evening. The moon is very high in the sky. It's at its first quarter phase. Uh, this is a good way to point out a misconception a lot of students have that when the sun goes down, the moon comes up, but we can actually see the moon during the daytime and the nighttime. So we'll start off the moon being able to see the moon in the daytime sky rising somewhere at about three, four o'clock and traveling across the sky and setting by about one or two a.m. And then as the weeks progress after about the first week of April, um, when it's in its full phase, then it will match that misconception that the as the sun goes down, the moon does come up, but then it'll rise later and later in the evening. So we could take a look at the moon. It's a great way to start off the month looking at it, um, taking a look at it in the daytime sky. If you have a pair of binoculars, go ahead and focus them in on that moon in the sky. Let me see if I can uh, zoom us in here and take a look at the moon. Here we can see the moon definitely in its first quarter phase where it looks like half of the face of the moon that's facing towards us is lit up. And you can definitely see in a pair of binoculars different light areas and dark areas, even during the daytime. Now, I'm gonna take us a little bit later into the evening. Um, this is, was about six o'clock, seven o'clock. It'll start to get dark at about eight o'clock, just so we can see this a little bit better. And definitely by eight o'clock, if you look at this with a pair of binoculars, you can get a really, really good view here of the moon. Um, you can see some of the, the dark spots that stand out right here. This uh, spot all the way out by the edge of the moon. This is called the Sea of Crisis. We used to call these dark areas seas. At one time, it was hypothesized that there was water on the moon long, long ago and that these were the oceans we were looking at. We now know that this is dark volcanic rock where um, large craters in the moon's surface were filled in with this volcanic rock billions of years ago, but we still see it left over today. So we call this the Sea of Crisis. Up here, this circle, kind of towards the top of the moon, this is the Sea of Serenity. And then this less obvious circle, but round area of dark rock, this is called the Sea of Tranquility. So you can see the different seas and um, all of the dark areas have different names given to them. Now, if you do have a pair of binoculars and you can zoom in on that moon a little bit more, maybe get a magnification of 10 or 15 times on it. If you look at that Sea of Serenity up towards the top here, you'll notice that there's a little line that kind of travels along the left side of that. And this is a mountain range that goes along and right down here at the end of this um, mountain range it ends in a really large crater called Copernicus and as the nights go on you can follow that mountain range down and see as that um, crater emerges here on what we call the terminator that line between the night side of the moon and the day side of the moon and this is the best place to look at things on the moon because as the sunlight comes in, it really looks in 3D. It casts shadows and light. Sometimes you can even see the, the crest of that crater starting to peek out um, on the dark side because the sunlight is still hitting it. So that's one thing to look for the moon. And then down towards the bottom, or depending on what kind of um, binoculars you're using, or if you're looking through a telescope, this might all be upside down. We have to remember when we look through mirrors and prisms, sometimes it flips images. So here in my image, the true image of it is this mountain range in this uh, crater Copernicus will be up towards the top or the northern part of the moon. And down here towards what I'm calling the bottom or the southern half of the moon, there's a crater right on here called Tycho. And I'll zoom in. It stands out a lot because Tycho is a fairly large crater, but you can see in the middle of it, it has a rebound spot where um, 
It doesn't show up too well here in my software, but you can see there's a little rebound, a little mountain inside of that crater where the material, whatever impacted that, left a big kind of mountain in the middle of it. And really easy to pick out from the other craters around it. So that's the crater Tycho. And the crater Copernicus is right at this uh, end of this mountain range off of the Sea of Serenity up here. So that's the moon to look at. Now let's go back to our six o'clock sky here and we're gonna return back to where we started here. The sun will start to go down at um, about 6.45 in the beginning of the month. It'll, or I'm sorry, 7.30 in the beginning of the month. It won't go down until about eight o'clock by the end of the month. So in the beginning of the month by about eight o'clock, definitely by nine o'clock, we're going to be really, really dark out. Now, the winter triangle is starting to set. You can see here by 9 o'clock, it's getting low to the ground. We've been talking about that in our past couple of videos um, all month long. We can still see the planet Venus really bright in the west. It'll stay over there all of the month of April as it continues to look like it climbs higher in the sky as it passes all of this. It'll kind of stay in the same spot. Then starting next month in May, is when Venus will start to disappear and we'll, we won't see it until we see it in the evening sky again a little bit later on in the summer. But taking center stage right now as we're looking south is a constellation called Leo the Lion. And I'm going to show you a way to find this using a shape in the sky that most people are familiar with. Now, in order to see this, we're going to turn and we're going to look towards the east a little bit more. So let's see, we'll take a look here in the east. And rising up really high in the east is the familiar shape of the Big Dipper, these seven bright stars here in the sky. It's very high in the east, um, getting close to overhead here in our springtime sky. It's actually part of a larger constellation called Ursa Major, or the Big Bear, but most people are familiar with this Big Dipper here. Now, if we imagine this as a handle for the Big Dipper, and this is a cup that you would pour water into here. There's two different ways that you can find the constellation of Leo the Lion that takes center stage right now. Sometimes we think of this cup as having holes in the bottom, and if you were to fill it with water, the water would drip out the bottom, and it becomes the big dripper, and it drips onto the back of the lion right here. So I'll bring up the lion. This is our lion right here. This is the lion's head, its mane. Um, this is its body here. And its tail ends with this bright star, Denebola, which actually translates um, roughly in Arabic to the tail of the lion. So there's the lion. That's one way to find it, is using the Big Dipper as a big dripper and looking for how it drips down onto the back of the lion. The part of the lion that stands out the most is this backwards question mark here, or the triangle that makes up kind of its tail area here. Another way you can find it is by using the handle of the Big Dipper. Sometimes we say we take this handle, which looks kind of like a bent line, what we call an arc, and if you come off of that and you keep that arc going, you get to a really bright star, Arcturus. So we say arc to Arcturus. Arcturus is the bottom um, and brightest star in a constellation called Bootes. Um, this is a goat herder or a herdsman down here. Um, more Recently, most people usually call it the kite shape in the sky. It looks kind of like a, a kite here or a diamond, really easy to spot. So Arcturus here at about 9 o'clock will be low in the east, but still easy to find if you find that big dipper and arc down to Arcturus. If you keep going in that arc, you can speed on to Spica, which is a, a bright star that you'll see just over the horizon. You're going to need a, a clear horizon to kind of identify it this way. This is the brightest star in the constellation Virgo. Virgo is really, really hard to identify because most of its stars are really, really dim other than this brightest star in its spica. So you can arc to Arcturus, speed on to spica, and then I rebound to Regulus, which is this star right here in Leo the Lion, which is the heart of the lion, sometimes they call it. And it makes kind of a ring of bright stars right here in the east, which are going to be most of our springtime constellations that we can look for. Now, if we face the south once again, and we see we've been able to identify here 
Leo the Lion. If we look to one of our winter constellations over here, Gemini, who's still very predominant here in the springtime, these are the brothers of Pollux and Castor here in the sky, and they're two bright stars that stand out. So if you look for Regulus um, here, the heart of the lion, the bottom of the backwards question mark in Leo the lion, and imagine a straight line that goes between Pollux here, one of the twins in Gemini, and Regulus. If you can imagine a straight line right through there, halfway through that line, there is a very, very faint constellation, something that you can see. The constellation that's in there is Cancer the Crab. Its stars are all very, very dim. You need to have your eyes adjusted to the dark to be able to find any of these. But Regulus and Pollux here stand out really, really brightly in the sky. And if you look halfway in between them with a pair of binoculars, you'll be treated to a neat surprise. If I can kind of zoom in here, oh, let me see if it'll let me zoom in on this area of the sky, might be able to see what we'd be able to find Oh, yeah, right in here, this is what we call the Beehive Cluster of Stars. And it's a big open cluster of stars with a few hundred stars in it. As you move your binoculars around in this portion of the sky, it'll stand out as a little patch of stars in there. And we call it the Beehive Cluster. People a long time ago thought it looked like a hive of busy bees swarming around in this area of the sky. At one point, um, back about 4,000 years ago when the Greeks were first uh, doing these constellations and putting them up here. Uh, this was actually all part of Leo the lion. This was the, the lion's back over here. And this beehive cluster before light pollution was able to be seen just with the eyes. You wouldn't need binoculars or anything there in the sky. And it was thought to be the whiskers of the lion there. Um, so our sky does change over time as, as people change the stories in the sky and things like that. So here in month of April, you can go outside, take a look at that moon, see if you can identify some things on the moon. As the sun goes down, look for that big dipper. And if you want to, turn it into a big dripper that drips down on the back of Leo the lion, the big question mark here. Once you've identified Leo the lion, see if you can find the lion's heart and make a line that connects to Gemini, the twins here. Look in between in the very center of that line. Scan around with a pair of binoculars if you have them at home and look for that beehive cluster. So go ahead out, um, look around. Hopefully it's not too cloudy this month and see what you can find in the nighttime sky.